Okay, I'm going to get rolling on a little bit of a more in-depth pattern here. Uh, it's going to be an October caddis pupa. When it's all said and done, that's kind of what we're going to end up with. Uh, this is something that I use quite a bit on one of my local rivers. Obviously, you can't really, well, I mean, you can fish them, but they're not really active all year long. Um, they're active kind of early fall. And the cool thing is when fish key in on these, a lot of times you'll go to the river and sometimes you'll see fish flying right out of the water. And uh, that is kind of odd behavior, and that's really what they're doing. They're, uh, they're, they're coming up and smashing those pupa. And for the size of these things, they're, it, that extra energy they're kicking out is definitely worth it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a strip of this lead tape, and I'm going to cut a tapered piece like that. And what I'm going to do is start in the back, Get that locked in, hold that with my finger, <clears throat> and we're gonna start wrapping that. The first couple wraps, you gotta hang on to that with your finger because that adhesive is just really not strong enough to hold that on there. Once you get a couple of wraps on there, you'll be good to go. Now, the reason why you cut it in that triangular shape is you're gonna see as we start to wrap this up the shank that it's gonna start getting thicker and thicker and thicker, and it's going to help with that tapered look. So we'll just keep on going, and when you get up to the thicker part, it's going to add a little bit more bulk, and it's going to help with all that stuff. You don't really need these to be super, super heavy. Um, you know, these aren't things that you're fishing on the bottom. Um, to be honest with you, I'd rather fish a pupa uh, a little bit more in the middle of the water column, so you don't need it super heavy. Thread I'm going to use is going to be some Burnt Orange UTC 70. So we'll get that started right here, right by the weight. And this fly is not difficult to tie, but there are a few things that you have to make sure that you pay attention to and make sure that you kind of do it the right way. Uh, the tapering of the weight is kind of the first part. Okay. Next order of business is going to be the tying in of just a piece of thread. Uh, what you really should use is something like uni thread, some sort of round thread, uh, not something that you can split like the UTC. Uh, the color that I'm using here is going to be rusty brown, but you don't really have to worry too much about the color of this particular step. I mean, you want it to be pretty close to the primary color of the fly, but it's really not that important. So I'm going to hook that into my material clip, get that out of the way, and good to go. Now, next order of business, I've got a piece of brown ostrich hurl. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these, I'm going to grab two fibers at the base. You see at the base, you've got the smaller fibers, and then they kind of taper up to a larger size as you go out. I want to start with those smaller fibers. So I'm going to rip this off the quill right at the base. And if you get a little bit of that, uh, a little bit of that stuff from the quill on there, we can just give that a quick snip. And I'm going to hold these two pieces together just like this. I'm going to simply slide them onto the bottom of the hook. I'm going to capture the first piece. Actually, I, I don't like doing that. And then I'm going to take the second piece, slide that in there. And the second piece is always a little harder to capture. But once you do, you're good to go. And we're going to... Run our thread up, and I'm going to use this opportunity to just fill in a little bit of dead space here, and we're good to go. Now, ideally what you want is you want to make sure that that hurl is on both sides of the hook, because that's where we're going to do the, the gills and the little things sticking out of the side. All right. So once we have all that tied in, what we want to do is we want to get the, the body material on there, which is just going to be this piece of rubber, uh, rubber nymph skin. This is the package here, the Kylie's nymph skin. That's going to be a net, the natural color. <clears throat> and the cool thing about this fly is this is specifically for the October pupa. Um, but if you're tying caddis pupa, it really doesn't matter what kind of caddis you're trying to imitate. You can change the size, change the color. Uh, it's really the technique that's important here. So what I'm going to do with this nymph skin is I'm going to tie that to a point 
taper that off a little bit like that. And I'm going to just catch that point right there. And then continue wraps down, get that all locked in. And the reason why you want to cut that to a point is not only does it make it easier to tie in, um, but that's also going to help with that tapered look as you start wrapping it up the hook. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that and fold it over. Normally I'd get my bobbin out of the way here, but with all this camera stuff here, it's hard to get my bobbin holder in place. And I'm going to give a second wrap. Third, kind of pulling it tight. And I'm just going to make my way up the body. Now, if you look at that part that I just wrapped, you can see that part right there that makes the segmented section. There's something a little bit, where's my scissors? So you can see the segmented portion right there. And as I move up, this is part of the body I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see, and then right about here, that's where you can see the thread underneath it. There's a little bit of a line there where you can see the orange thread. So when I wrap my next segment, that's kind of where I want that next segment to cover so that it continues to give me that segmented look. So now for the next one, here's the part of the segmented body. About halfway up, this part here is going to be covered. And I'm just going to continuously wrap so I get similar size segments. And because of the way that I structured the underbody and with the amount of pressure that I'm giving on the nymph skin, it's going to continue to taper up and give me the look that I want. And that's pretty good there. Now, with a pupa, you generally leave a little bit more of the head area than you would for a standard nymph. Um, you're not really using the same proportion. So I'm gonna stop right there, that's plenty of body. I'm going to move my thread up and I'm going to capture that with a firm wrap and get a couple on there to keep that in place. And I'll get that right out of there. Come on. All right, so far so good. I'm going to give a couple of wraps just to kind of lock that in, but not too many. I don't want to build up too much thread bulk in the head there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this orange marker, just a regular Sharpie. This nymph skin actually takes color pretty well. And all I'm going to do is start from the front and go to the back. And I'm going to go front to back the entire time. Back to front would mean that, see that little space right there where there's no color? I kind of want that. Helps with the segmentation. And when you first do this, it's going to really, really look bright, bright orange. And contrary to popular belief, October caddis really aren't even really that orange. They're a little bit lighter and have some bits of tan in there. But what's going to happen is as that color soaks in and that continues to uh, take effect, that's going to kind of darken up a little bit and it's going to give us a little bit closer to the color that we're looking for. So what we want now is we want to mimic the, the side parts, which I believe are gills on the pupa. So I'm going to take that piece of thread that I tied in first. I'm going to bring it underneath the two pieces of hurl that I tied in. And as I start wrapping it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of hurl, I'm going to put it forward, and then I'm going to lock that in place with this spare piece of thread that I have. And I'm gonna do that on both sides. So as I wrap it, with every wrap, I'm going to position the ostrich where I want it and use that thread to lock it in all the way up the body. And I'm trying to nestle my thread right into each segmented piece so that I don't lose that segmented look that I've already created with the body material. See how it's sitting right in where those, where that segmentation occurs? So I'm just going to continue all the way up. I know my hand's probably blocking a little bit what I'm doing, but I'll probably get the gist here. We're going to go all the way 
up into every segment. Get that nice and tight. Try not to break that piece of thread that you tied in because there's really no going back. If you do, kind of means you got to start over again. I, I got a lot of tricks up my sleeve, but I don't really have a lot of tricks to save the fly if you do that. You got to go back and start over. So now I'm going to take my main thread and capture all of that with a few good wraps. Make sure that doesn't go anywhere. And we'll snip it all off. So like I said, not, not terribly difficult, but there are some specific things you kind of have to follow. It's a fly worth tying, though. Really, really buggy fly, and the technique can kind of be applied to a lot of different other patterns. Well, not other patterns, but different colors and sizes. Uh, and fish go nuts for these things in, 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 uh, in, in October. I'm fishing these closer to uh, Vermont on a particular river where these get pretty plentiful. And it's a really, really fun hash to fish. Like fish, like I said, they fly right out of the water at them. Okay, next order of business. I've got a spool of mono here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a small little piece with my nail clippers here, snip that off, and... Hopefully at your desk, you've got a pair of tweezers here. So I'm going to put that in there. So I have even lengths on both sides. I'll take a lighter. Okay, so we're going to take this. I got a lighter here. We're going to just kind of touch that lighter up to the line so that we get... rounded out look and that's what we'll end up with what I like to do is I like to kind of keep those right in the tweezers set that right in there I like to tie these eyes in on the bottom of the hook so once I get my thread to where I've at least got them grabbed and they're not going to fly off because they're so small if they fly off trust me you're not going to find them so I've got that in there I'm just going to nestle those in place and get those locked in you can use bead chain too if you want, but I, I think bead chain are just a, just a little too big for a caddis pupa. Little too big. Mono eyes are exactly what I want. Now, as far as the eyes go, I want these to be black. So I'm just going to simply take a Sharpie. The burnt mono takes color very well. We're just going to kind of color those up. You can also, if you want, use some uh, some black golf resin, which I've used quite a few times. But to be honest with you, I found that the resin doesn't really bind to the monofilament very well. So if you if you use that, I feel like it's just, even with the slightest touch, uh, the resin seems to come right off of the mono eyes, and it's just not really my preference. I, I don't think that's the way to go. It might look better for video purposes, but... I don't think that that's really going to gain you anything. So, so far, that's what we have. The very, very buggy looking fly already. It's got the shape we want, everything we're looking for. And now we're going to finish up the head. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to take a chunk of brown Swiss straw, which is basically just a piece of tissue paper disguised as some sort of essential fly tying material. That's essentially all it is. I'm going to get that tied in. Now, if I fold that forward, that's the point right there that we want to try to get to. Because remember, the head of a caddis pupa is a little bit bigger than what you would see in a standard nymph. So we're going to get that tied in there. So from here on out, I'm going to be honest, some of the things that I tend to do are probably considered somewhat optional. Um, I think they all have a reason and a purpose, which is why I do them. But honestly, if you want to just dub the head and be done with it at this point, um, it's certainly a fly that will catch fish in its current state. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a couple of things that I really think add some stuff to this fly. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take a piece of cinnamon CDC. And I'm going to fold back the fibers on the head. And I'm simply going to plop that down on top here. 
I'm not tying this in any crazy way or anything like that. No dubbing loop or anything. I'm just going to tie it in straight like that. Okay, and we're going to leave that there for a minute. Next order of business is I am going to take a piece of sulfur orange partridge. And I don't mind that it's sulfur orange and it's a little bit brighter than I'd like to see, but it's going to darken up quite a bit because I'm going to do something with it. So I'm going to find a feather that's got some uh, some very, very close barbs there. I'm going to pull off all the fuzz, all the crap on the bottom, get all that out of there. I'm going to pull off a little bit more. So all I have now is just the top part like that. I'm going to take a pair of very <clears throat> fine point scissors. I'm going to push that right through the top there and snip that. So I end up with something that looks like that. The reason, where the heck is it? No, oh, right in front of me. So I'm going to take a little bit of this Solares. Told you there's a lot of steps to this fly. It seems like it's really, really in depth. And I guess maybe by definition it kind of is. But once you do a few of them, they go really, really quick. I'm just going to take that Solares. I'm going to coat that feather and some of this resin. And you can see how I, as I do that, not only does it darken up and kind of become the same color as the rest of what we're doing here, but you also get some of those barbs sticking together. We'll zap that with the UV light. Okay, and that's going to give us something that's got a little bit of rigidity to it. What this is going to mimic is this is going to mimic the wing buds of a caddis pupa. So we're going to take that and I'm going to put it <clears throat> right on the side there. I want it angled down a little bit. It's tough to get a grip on that, but there we go. I want to grab that as quick as I can before I lose it. And because it's rigid, you got to work your thread around the other side, which is a little bit of a pain, but whatever. So we'll take the other side fold that down as well. I want that in a similar position. Sometimes it helps to turn your vise a little to make sure that that's kind of... The back side is a little bit harder to get to look, like the front, because you can't really see what you're doing as much, but that's a good option for the rotary vise. Okay, and we'll slip our scissors in there, get rid of that, and we're good to go. All right, for the dubbing, again, this is not absolutely necessary, but I do like the buggy look. I'm going to bring my thread down, come up, make a very small dubbing loop, and I'm going to hook that out of the way. Okay. Okay. Next order of business is the pupa horns, as they call them. The antennae that fold back and give a pupa that classic look. We're going to mimic that with a simple mallard feather. One mallard feather is going to give you all the horns you would ever need for the rest of your life. So I'm going to separate two of these strands. And see how these strands have a little bit of a natural curve to them? I want to keep that curve. So I want that to be pointing in this direction. I'm going to just lay that right here on top of one of the eyes. And when I get that right where I want it, which is a little bit tough, you don't really need to do this at this stage, but this is the step where I like to do this. Because when I fold the wing case over, if the horns aren't all secured, they could flare out and go all different directions. So I like to get them secured in now before I do anything else. I'm going to get the other one on the other side, same exact thing. Get them pretty similar in length. And cinch them down. 
good. Get rid of that. Okay. All right, so back to the dubbing loop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this blend of orange and cream hairline dubbing. And <clears throat> that's just a blend that I made myself. I just took the two colors and just kind of mixed them together and kind of did it myself. And you can experiment with, you know, your own mixture. But again, you know, an October caddis, yes, is orange, but it's not really that orange. I mean, if you look at the actual bug, yes, it's got orange in it, but there's a lot of a lot of cream in it, a little bit lighter than than you would think. It's not really outright orange. Um, so I like to use a little bit of cream here to kind of lighten up, take the take that harshness off of that orange dubbing. I got a slew of helicopters going over my house right now for some reason. All right, so I'm gonna get that whole mess tucked up into that thread. Uh, tool fell out. And again, the dubbing loop is not absolutely necessary here, but I like the buggy look that a dubbing loop gives you. So I much prefer that. So we're gonna take that, twist it up. Get that nice and tight. Okay, then we're gonna take a little brush here, tease some of that stuff out of there. Get my hackle pliers to grab the thread. And we're all good. So we're gonna make sure those horns are locked down where we want it with this wrap. We're gonna go straight down. You don't even really have to have touching wraps. I actually prefer to not have that. I don't wanna overdub this. But we'll go and get that, get that locked in behind the eyes with a couple of tight wraps. Get that out of there. Okay. Pretty much time to get this cleaned up and done. So I'm gonna take my CDC, I'm gonna fold that over. And I like tying it in this way because I don't really wanna grab a ton of fibers. I really just wanna grab kind of a few. So I'm gonna kind of fold those back a little bit, hold them there, and then grab the feather with my thread, and get that cinched down. Couple in front. Get that all cleaned up. Now I got the town lawnmower going on out there. Got all kinds of noises in the background here. Final step, let's make sure we've got even parts of the CDC on both sides. And my dog doesn't like it. Lawn care is her job. So I'm gonna take that Swiss straw, get that tied in, get that nice and tight. I'm gonna fold it back to make sure that my final wraps are nested right in there nice and tight. Get a couple in front. You can either use a razor blade or some really fine point scissors, really get those right up in there as close as you can. Get as much of that material out of there as you possibly can. This is where a really, really good pair of fine point scissors really helps a lot. Get a couple wraps in there to hide that material, build up a nice little head. Get a whip finisher on there. so far get a little bit of that on there 
quarter a little too much. That's not bad though. We'll get that out of there. Get that out of the hook eye. Let that sink into the thread. Zap it with a UV light. I'll do a little bit of better job of curing that after I kill the video here, but that'll cure it up enough for now. And that is pretty much it. That is your October caddis pupa. These start popping towards the end of September uh, into October. And there are, they're standard caddis. They look just like a caddis. Everything about them is pretty much the same as a caddis, but they're much, much bigger. This hook size is a size 10. Uh, I tie my dries pretty big too. Um, you know, I don't, I can't really speak to other regions, but I know the region where I fish these things, man, do the fish go nuts for them. Uh, you catch them on a good day when a hatch of these are going off, you'll see fish flying out of the water. Um, all kinds of crazy stuff. These are, this is a really, really, uh, popular pattern around here <clears throat> catches a ton of fish and you know it, it might seem like an in-depth pattern to tie and I guess maybe it kind of is but once you tie a few of them you really kind of get used to it it's really not any more difficult than any other fly you can tie there's just a few more steps um, so hopefully the video can kind of help keep all those steps in line uh, give you a good hand in tying these yourself if you have any questions or anything just post up in the comments uh, I'll be more than happy to respond anytime okay thank you